Hello, welcome to the chapter one desk lecture. I'm going to, in this video, or in these series of videos for chapter one, walk you through an introduction to accounting, why accounting exists, some just some background information about businesses and things like that, components of a business, all that jazz. We are gonna talk about financial statements for the first time here. And then we're gonna spend most of our time in these videos for chapter one going through transactions. And you're gonna see that's a lot of what accounting is, and so we're gonna do that. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do in this video is give you some advice on just how to be successful in this class, and just kind of a good starting point. So the first thing I like to do in my traditional classroom is introduce myself and just kind of give a little background about me. If you're watching this video and you're planning on watching other videos, you're gonna be hearing my voice a lot. And so I think it's kind of helpful for you to know who I am and kind of what my story is. Uh, my name is Martin Blaine, and I am a CPA licensed in the state of North Carolina. I'm not currently an active CPA, and so I'm required to tell you that I'm inactive. I am just, all I do is teach, and so I don't need a, an active CPA license to do that. I went to a small liberal arts school in Arkansas and got my bachelor's degree in accounting and then moved on to a master's degree at Wake Forest in North Carolina, which is where I eventually got my CPA license. From an employment standpoint, I worked for one of the big accounting firms called Deloitte & Touche. I worked for a forensic accounting firm. And I worked, right before I came to work at Columbus State, I worked for a food manufacturer. And I'll talk a little bit about some of those experiences and how they've impacted me and could potentially be beneficial to you as we go through these different chapters. I've been working at Columbus State full-time since around 2010. And I've been teaching, obviously, Accounting 11 pretty much every semester since I started. So I've been teaching this class for a pretty long time, and I feel like I know what kinds of things work and what kind of things don't work. And so the, the, the purpose of these videos is to kind of focus you on what those things that work. So the very first thing that I like to do when talking about accounting is just kind of helping you understand and try to see why accounting exists. What is the purpose of this class? And one of the things that I like to talk about is imagine, and, and obviously this would go a lot different in my classroom, but I do think it can be helpful for you just listening to this on your own. Imagine you're a banker and one of your customers comes in and says that they want to borrow money to help their business grow. Obviously you would have some questions for them before you decided to lend them money. Questions about how much money they need, how much interest rates would be. These are questions you would answer for them and they would answer back to you. But there would be specific questions about their business that I think you would have. Questions like, how much money did you make last year? Or how much money have you made in the last five years? And these are important questions that I think a banker would wanna know. Well, there would obviously be some issues with, these, with this conversation. If you were to go to a small business owner and say, show me your income, you would have questions about how are they calculating this? Who's preparing these reports? You know, do they know what they're doing essentially? And accounting really solves a lot of these problems. Accounting as it stands today and has stood for 500 years really allows these conversations to occur very seamlessly where we all know we're talking about the same things. If we're educated about accounting, we can kind of have an, an educated conversation and make sure we're talking the same language. One thing you've you may have heard before, but it's very commonly said, is that accounting is the language of business. And this is, a true, this is a true statement, I think a true characterization of what accounting is. It allows businesses to have conversations with each other using the same language. And so what you'll find we do early on in this class is we start with terminology, just like in a language. If you've ever learned a foreign language before or know anyone that's learned a foreign language, I'm guessing what you'll find is the first thing they did was learn terms. The second thing they do is start to put those terms together in, in, in sentences, and that's essentially what we do in this class. And you'll see that today in this, in this video as well, or in these series of chapter one videos. So who uses accounting information? Again, just some background information. Internal users use accounting information. By internal users, we mean people that work inside of a business. And so if you work for a business, you probably work for a business now, it's possible you've seen reports generated by accountants inside of your business. If you work at a restaurant, there might be reports about how many sales you had the day before. Or if you work in a retail space, what were our store sales last week or, or yesterday? These are examples of internal reports that accountants prepare. 
if you're interested in this or if this is something that you might be interested in doing as a career, Accounting 1212, part two essentially of the uh, Columbus State Accounting Experience is all about the internal user type reports and questions. This class, however, Accounting 1211, focuses mostly on external users. The language of business accounting as it's being spoken to people outside of our organization because it's important when we talk about our business that we use the terminology that everyone's expecting so that everyone's on the same page so there aren't any surprises again just a little more background information before we start doing some actual accounting work is our forms of business a corporation is a state sanctioned business again if you decided today I'm gonna to start my own business and I wanna do it as a corporation. You can't just do that by yourself today. You have to file paperwork with the state, you have to get approval from the state, and that's the case anywhere in the United States. Partnerships can be anywhere from an informal handshake to a formal written document and require more than one person, obviously, to have a partnership. And a sole proprietorship is more simple, where you could decide today, I just wanna be a sole proprietor. If you decided to go into business today, more than likely that's how you're gonna do it, as a sole proprietorship. Now we're getting to some accounting. And I talked about accounting as a language of business. And we're going to start with our terminology. That's where we're going to start. And before this video ends, which will be just in about a minute or so, we're going to talk about the accounting elements. So you've seen this word elements before, I'm guessing, in science class. When we talk about the elements of the universe, we're talking about carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen. You've seen the periodic table. Well, for accounting, it's a little simpler. There aren't as many elements, obviously, as there are in science, but it's still important. And so for us, we have three different types of categories of elements or three types of elements. Again, these are the elements of a business. Every part of a business, the economic part of a business at least, can be put into one of these three categories. And so essentially how I'm gonna close this video is I'm gonna talk through a brief introduction to both assets and liabilities, and then you'll, you'll see the rest of the story in the next video. Assets, future economic benefit, future economic benefit. If something provides a business with future economic benefit, it's an asset. Liabilities, future economic sacrifice or future economic obligation. Either a payment obligation or a performance obligation is a liability. And again, as I said, I'll define equity in the next video. One other thing you'll note as we go through these videos is, is there's a lot of breaks in these videos. And those breaks serve two purposes. The first is it keeps the videos from being too long. This video is already eight minutes long. And what I don't wanna do is have you start a video and have it be 50 minutes long. That's too long. Your computer doesn't want to, to, for, for the video to be 50 minutes and honestly no one does the video to be that long. The second thing is your brain definitely doesn't want the video to be that long. Your brain starts to pay less, less attention to what you're doing after about 20 minutes. And so I'm definitely gonna keep these videos much shorter than that as much as possible. So I encourage you to take a break when it says to take a break, do something else, take a walk, get a, something, to uh, coffee or water or something to, to drink or just stop doing accounting. Even if it's just for a minute or two, it's a good idea for your brain to kind of do that and take a break. So. Thanks for watching and I'll be back for part two.